Okay, guys. So today we're going to continue working on the reading section. Yesterday we started working on it and we went through one type of question, right? Which is which was a detailed type of question. Today we'll cover some more. And let's see. We're going to continue, by the way, working on the same practice set, the one about the Tuvacan. And yes, so that's going to be what we're doing. Guys, hold on. All right, so we did detailed questions. Today we're gonna do accept, inference, vocabulary, if we have time function and practice. Yes. Yes. Hey guys, remember that the detailed questions we said basically asked you about specific details in the paragraph. What you had to do was read the question, don't read the options, go back to the paragraph, look for the keywords, find the information they're asking for, and then read the options and compare until you get to the right. All right, now we're gonna work on the second type of question, which is the accept type of question. Okay, guys? Now, this is one of the easiest ones, I would say um because of the way that you have to do it it's also very direct it doesn't take up that much time and the way to get through to the correct answer is by eliminating options okay now what is the difference between detail and accept type of questions in detailed questions they ask you for a specific detail something that was explicitly directly said or mentioned in the paragraph but in this one they, it will be the opposite they will ask you about information that was not mentioned in the passage or that, that is not true, basically. So something that is not mentioned or that is not true. How would you identify these questions? Whenever you have the word not in capital letters or you have the word except in capital letters, you know that it's an except type of question, okay? We're gonna be answering question number three of the same set. Could anyone please read the question? Only the question. Which of the following is not mentioned in paragraph two as a main factor in the development of the Otihuacan? Okay, thank you so much, Ricardo. All right, so we're going to do the same thing we were doing, which is we're going to, I'm going to give you guys some time to figure out the answer. And then we will discuss. Okay, guys, and I'll let you know the strategies. So please, I'll give you one minute. I think it's loading. I'll give you guys one minute. Read the paragraph and let me know what you think, which option, which option you would choose. Okay, guys, so what do you think?
Which one would you choose? Evelyn, what do you think? Oh, nice. All right, Henry says option C, a long period of volcanic inactivity in the Teotihuacan Valley. Evelyn says B, and Wells, Ricardo says C too, okay. Okay, guys. We have one more. Wendy also agrees. See, I think everyone is crying towards me. All right. Now, the strategy we have to use here is similar to the one we used in the detailed questions. So what do we do? First thing, we obviously read the question. We, it says, what is not mentioned as a main factor in the development of the Tupacan, right? Remember what we did? We identify the keywords first. Can you guys tell me what the keywords are in the question? What are the keywords in the question? What are they asking about? Not mentioned. Mm, I'm not sure. Remember, keywords are words that you feel you can find in the paragraph, things that they are asking about, right? Obviously they're asking for something that's not mentioned, but as about what, regarding what? Main factor in the development, great. That's it, those are the keywords, main factor and development. Now, careful with one thing. You know this word here, main, main factor, if I tell you guys, a factor in the development of the Tuacan, that's one thing. If I tell you a main factor in the development of the Tuacan, that's another thing. If I tell you a secondary factor, a completely different thing. And if I tell you a non-important factor, that's another thing, right? It's those words are called modifiers because they are changing the way that you think of things. Same thing if I tell you, for example, imagine a car then you're probably gonna imagine any car at all. Now, if I tell you, imagine a red car, then you will have a specific image of a red car on your brain. Now, if I tell you, imagine an old fashioned small red car. So I'm changing the image that you have of the car that you're, that you're picturing, right? Those words that change the noun are called modifiers. Now the TOEFL reading has a trap with modifiers. Because for example, sometimes they ask something like, what is something that the Tihuacan's people always did? And in the paragraph, you have something that the Tihuacan's people sometimes did this, right? So if you don't pay attention to those modifiers, always versus sometimes, you're gonna make mistakes. You know, if you just focus on like, what you think are the most important words without considering the modifiers, then you're very likely to make more mistakes. So it's not the same to say that the Wakans people always did this and sometimes did that, right? It's not the same to say a main factor than another factor. So in this case, those are the keywords, great. What do we do with them now? We look for them in the paragraph, right? Where are those words? We have the word development here. We have the word main factors here. So the answer should be around those words. It says, among the main factors are, okay, if they're asking for something that is not a main factor, first of all, we have to know what are the main factors. Before we get to what is not a main factor, we first need to know what are those main factors. So what are those main factors? What is the first main factor in the paragraph? Teotihuacan's geographic location on a natural trade route. 
to the south and east of the Valley of Mexico. Great, Henry, perfect. That is the first main route. What about the second? The obsidian resources in the Teotihuacan Valley itself. In the third? And the third is the valley's potential for ex extensive irrigation. Great. Do we have more main factors? No. No, we don't, right? Now, if you continue reading, you're going to find that we do have other factors, right? So that's the exact role of other factors. And then you have religious significance, historical situation, ingenuity and for signs of the elite, and the impact of natural disasters, such as volcanic eruptions. So if you continue reading, you're gonna find yourself with other factors too. But remember that we're just looking at the main factors. So that's it, we have only three. Now that you have found the answer, same thing as in the previous one, we go to the options, we compare. And in this case, we eliminate the ones that are true or that are mentioned. Obviously you need to double check and make sure that you're not getting confused there, right? So for example, geographic location is option D, right? Now we double check and we read everything and it says Teotihuacan's location on a natural crater. That's good. If it said something similar but different, like Teotihuacan's location on, uh, I don't know, a surrounding trade route. So that's not the same as a natural trade route. You know, that will change things completely. But it's okay because it says the same. Now, then we have the obsidian resources. Which option is that? Option A, A great. Is it correct? Yes, right? Because it says the obsidian resources in the Teotihuacan Valley itself. So the presence of obsidian is the same in the Teotihuacan Valley. You know, everything would be different if instead of in, here we have the presence of obsidian near the Teotihuacan Valley, you know, that would change things, wouldn't it? Because it's not the same to say in the Teotihuacan Valley itself than saying near the Teotihuacan Valley. So careful with those things, make sure that you read everything. And finally, where do we have uh, the valley's potential for extensive irrigation? Option B, right, great. The potential for extensive irrigation of the Teotihuacan Valley lands is the same, nothing that is suspicious. So we have men, I mean, it has been mentioned option A, B, and D. Therefore, the only one that hasn't been mentioned as a main factor will be option C, a long period of volcanic inactivity in the Teotihuacan Valley, right? So is this okay? Do we understand the process? Clear? Okay, guys, it's pretty easy, right? I'd say it's one of the easiest ones. Any questions before we move forward? Guys? So let's see. Okay. All right. Now, the next type of question we're going to see is a little bit different. Maybe uh, some students find it a little bit more complicated. Um, it's a matter of practice, I'd say. The thing about this question is that it's not as direct as the other ones. This question is called inference question. Does anyone know what an inference is? Or maybe an example of an inference? So what's an inference, guys? Any ideas? An answer based on logic. Okay, great. I like your definition. It's basically 
uh, an answer that you're gonna base on logic. Yes. Now, an inference itself is when you make conclusions, right? When you draw conclusions based on certain evidence. So I may say something, you know, maybe I say something like, um, I don't know, maybe I could say, uh, let's say, you know, maybe if, if I just ask a question and like, do you know what time is it? Then you can make different inferences based on that question that I just asked, right? You can be, one inference could be maybe, you know, she's tired. Maybe she already wants the class to make. Another one would be maybe she has something to do after the class. Maybe her clock is not working, right? So you can make different inferences, different conclusions based on something that was said. That's an inference, you know, making or drawing conclusions based on a certain piece of evidence. That's what you're gonna have to do here, you know, but it's obviously gonna be a little bit more, it's not gonna be as subjective as the one that I put as an example. Now in this question, they are gonna ask you, as I was saying, about information that is not directly say. It's information that is not explicitly mentioned in the paragraph. Instead, it's information that is that was somehow implied or suggested, okay? You need to use your logic, as Ricardo was saying, and you're gonna have to go beyond. You're gonna have to read the lines in order to answer this question, okay? How do you know that you have an inference question that you're dealing with one? because you will have the words inferred, suggested, or implied. Whenever you have one of those three words, inferred, suggested, or implied, you know you're dealing with an inference question, okay? Uh, maybe, Mateo, could you please read the question? Question four. What can be inferred from paragraph three about we, we we will go prior to 200 BC. Okay, right. So don't read the options yet. We're gonna do the same. I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds, one minute. to so read the paragraph and try to come up with a response. Okay guys? So please try to answer this question and let me know. Okay, guys, so what would you say? So Ricardo says eight, I think. Okay. Who else? Wendy, what do you think? Mm -hmm. 
All right, Wendy says D. Valentina, what about you? Mm, I think D. D, okay, we have to this. Maria Rene? You there? Maria Rene says A to okay. So, um, Ricardo, can you please tell me why A? Because uh, the paragraph says that uh, this city uh, we Quilco was eliminated by the lava that emerged. So, so um, yeah, I think I think it's A, but I have my doubts because it's uh, the paragraph also says that. Um, Quick uh, Quick was uh, one of the large one of the largest centers of the area and A says small city, so I'm not very sure. Okay. And can anyone tell me why D? Wendy, why D? Because it says that Quiquilco, um, after it was affected by a volcanic eruption, it was eliminated as a potential rebel. So I think it's D. Because it was covered by, by this lava, all the agricultural land. Fair. OK, guys. Now, what is the process uh, that we need to follow to answer these questions? First thing, same as the other ones, we read the question carefully and it says, what can you infer about Quilco prior to 200 BC? Now, first of all, in order to make an inference, same thing as, as the example, right? You cannot make an inference if you don't have any basis. So before making any, before drawing any conclusions, we need to have the actual information that is directly in the paragraph. So first of all, we're gonna look for what information we have about Quiquilco prior to 200 BC. So what do we know about this city prior to 200 BC? Now it says, prior to 200 before Christ, a number of relatively small centers coexisted in near the Valley of Mexico. The first thing we know is that this center was either inside the Valley of Mexico or it was near the Valley of Mexico, one of the two, we don't know which. Now then it says around this time, so prior to 200 BC still, the largest of these centers, Quiquilco, was seriously affected. So another thing that we know about Quiquilco, besides the fact that it was in or near the Valley of Mexico, is that it was the largest of those centers from the area, right? As Ricardo was saying, it was the largest of those centers. Now what happens with Quiquilco being one of the largest of those centers, we know that it was seriously affected by a volcanic eruption with much of its agricultural land covered by that. So there was a volcanic eruption that seriously affected Quiquilco and their agricultural land was damaged, right? It was covered with the land. So though that is a third piece of information we have. What happens? Before, Quiquilco was one of the largest of those centers, but after the volcanic eruption and after the lava covered their agricultural land, they were eliminated as a rival. And finally, Teotihuacan emerged, right? This is where they stop talking about Quiquilco. Everything else is about other towns, about Teotihuacan. But remember, what we need to know is what happened with Quiquilco prior to 200 BC. So we don't really care about other towns. We don't really care about the Tihuacan or anything else, right? We stop reading when we don't, when we don't get what we want. So those are the things that we know about Quiquilco. Now that we have the information, we go to the options and we compare or we review the options and go one by one, seeing which one makes more sense. And remember, 
if you choose an option in an inference question, you need to be able to explain why. You need to be able to point out a part in the paragraph as evidence for what you're saying. So option A says, it was a fairly small city until that day. Let's analyze that. That says that prior to 200 before Christ, it was a fairly small city. And then when they say until that date, that means that when it gets to 200 BC, then the opposite has to happen. So they were a fairly small city. And in 200 BC, they develop into a bigger city, right? That is what option A is saying. Do we have enough evidence to say this is true? What do you guys think? Was it a fairly small city before 200 BC and, uh, and then they stopped being a fairly small city? Do we know that? Do we have evidence to say that? No. No, right? We don't. Actually, the opposite is going on. We know that prior to 200 BC, they were the largest of those centers. And then they were eliminated as arrivals. So actually the other way around, the other thing happened, the opposite of what we were optionizing. It was a fairly large city until that date. That would be a correct thing to say. Option A cannot be the one. We don't have evidence for that. We have evidence for the opposite. Option B says it was located outside the Valley of Mexico. That kind of brings me back to the idea that we had the first information that says it coexisted in and near, right? So Huiquilco was either in or near. Now, what, what tells us that it was outside the Valley of Mexico? Is there any information that we can use as evidence to prove that it was outside? No, right? Nothing says that it was outside. It could have been inside the Valley of Mexico. It could have been in. Of course, it could have been near as well, but we don't know. So we cannot say B. Now C says it emerged rapidly as an economical power, I'm sorry, as an economical and political center, right? Um, now as for C, option C is a very common trap in the TOEFL reading. And this is like usually one mistake that students make as, the students make as well. They are gonna have in the options things or phrases or words that were mentioned in the paragraph so that you get confused. So if you read the entire paragraph, you probably remember something that said emerge as a leading economic, economic and political power. So this is gonna remind you of what you read and some part of you is, wanna, is gonna want to choose option C because it reminds you of something that you read. And you're gonna be like, oh yes, I read something about this. Don't, you know, don't fall into the trap. Remember that it has to make sense and you need to have evidence. Right now, we don't know anything about whether Quiquilco emerged rapidly or not before 200 BC. So nothing to say that, right? This is about something else. This is about other towns. It isn't about Quiquilco. We don't know. We have no idea whether they emerged rapidly or not before 200 BC. So we cannot say that. And finally, obviously, by elimination, option D would be, and it is exactly because of what Wendy said, right? Wendy said, we know that Quiquilco was a large city. And we know that after the, after the volcanic eruption happened and after the agricultural land was damaged, they went terribly bad. So we know that something's going on there. You know, why is it that this volcanic eruption affected so much Quiquilco? It's because they relied heavily on their agriculture. So when their agricultural land was damaged, then the entire economy went down. And of course, we know what happened, right? They were eliminated as five. So option D has to be the one. And we do have evidence. We do have this, this piece of information that supports what we are saying, right? Is this clear? Do we all agree that it's D then? Yes. Any questions? No questions. All right, guys. 
So let's do one more. These are gonna be purpose questions or function questions, okay? What do you think they're about? If we call them purpose questions, what would they ask, what would they ask about? An answer that sums up the entire paragraph. Yeah, that's an option. Sometimes they ask for, they ask something like, what is the purpose of paragraph two? So in that case, you need to read the entire paragraph and understand the main idea of that paragraph, right? So yes, it will be like what Ricardo is saying. We'll be looking for an answer that summarizes one entire paragraph. But that isn't always gonna be the case. That is case number three we have here. In general, these purpose questions, they ask you about the function of something in the passage. So they could be like, why does the author use this, this specific word? You know, what is the purpose of the word? Why is the reason why the author is using that word? Or it could be, why does the author talk about this? Or what is the purpose of this sentence? You know, or a phrase or a word or a, sometimes a paragraph. But in general, they ask about the reasons behind the author's choices. So why the author has decided to include a certain word, a certain sentence or a certain paragraph in the passage, okay? We're gonna see how they work. Honestly, they do take up a bit more time than the other ones. And that's another thing, you know, when you know, um, when you're familiar with the types of questions and you practice enough, then you should be able to know which questions should be using up your time and which questions are fast to answer. So you're not gonna spend minutes in a vocabulary question, but you can spend more than one minute in a purpose question. It depends, you know, you, you need to know and be able to identify which ones require more time so that you don't spend um, too much time in one. We're gonna answer this question, question number eight. Okay. Um, all right, maybe, could anyone please read the question? Um, in paragraph six, the author discusses the thriving of Syrian operation in order to. Okay, thank you, Valentina. So in paragraph six, the author discusses the thriving of Syrian operation. Okay, same thing here. I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds. Well, in this case, I'm gonna give you a little bit more. Try to uh, come, I mean, try to, Choose an option, okay? So read the paragraph, look for the answer, let me know what you think.
All right. So, what do y'all think? Okay, so um, Laura says C, Wendy says C, Henry says C. Do we all agree it's C? Yes, I think Ricardo also. Great. Um, okay, guys, can you tell me why? Can any of you explain? Uh, it, ex it explains that uh, the thriving of Indian operation uh, um, had some repercussions. For example, they would necessitate more miners, additional manufacturers of obsidian tools and so on. And then this, all of these led to increased wealth Okay, great. That's true. So actually, yes. You know, in this type of questions, purpose questions, you have to take a look at two things. You will always have first a verb, you know? So if you think about the options, you have a verb first. And it says, explain why, give an example, illustrate how, explain how, you know? So you have to make sure that you have the two things correct. You need to have the correct verb, and of course, you need to have the correct object. You know, the object is what comes after the verb, right? In this case, it would be several factors influence each other to make the token a powerful and wealthy city. Now, let me tell you one thing, and this is very related. Um, this is very much related to the writing section. I don't know if you guys remember, like, if you're in, if you weren't in the writing section yet, then that's fine as well. But when you write, when you write a paragraph you always, every paragraph has an idea, right? And we said this yesterday as well. Remember we read every single paragraph and we tried to kind of think or analyze what was the main idea of each paragraph. So every paragraph talks about a different idea, always. in one specific idea, you know, this paragraph isn't talking about more than one idea. Although they are mentioning things like population growth, irrigation, mining, working, trade, this paragraph is only about one specific idea. So can you first tell me what the main idea of this paragraph is? What is the main idea of this paragraph? Remember the tip I gave you yesterday? Usually the main ideas of each paragraph are in the first sentence or in the last. So what is the main idea in this paragraph? Okay, Henry says the main idea is that the thriving of CN operation was brought powerful, led the Tiwakan to become a wealthy city. Okay, so basically, the thriving of CN operation brought power to the, to the Tiwakan in wealth, right? Power in wealth. Do you guys agree? Is it? I don't think so. Like the thriving of CN operation is part, it's not even part of the idea, it's something that is used to support the main idea. But what is the main idea here?
maybe the relationship of all those factors to make the the Otiwakan a wealthy city or a powerful city. Exactly, that's it. So the main idea here, and I think we said it yesterday. Remember, in the, this was the by the way the last paragraph, right? If you knew, if you read in the beginning, like the first parts of each paragraph and like the entire passage, then you have an idea and you know that this is the like the conclusion. So in this paragraph, they're trying to say that not only was it like they were rich in obsidian and that the rivals were eliminated, but every single factor that influenced the development of Totihuacan was related to each other and they had a positive feedback among each other, you know? So that is the main idea, the first sentence. It says, the picture of Teotihuacan is a classic picture of positive feedback among all of these factors that were mentioned before. So it wasn't only the obsidian that made Teotihuacan a good or a wealthy city. It was that the obsidian and how it related to trade and to population growth and to irrigation and religious tourism. So everything connected made the Tijuacan a powerful city. And that is this, the idea of this paragraph, to show how the several factors that were mentioned influenced each other, had a positive feedback among each other, a positive relationship with each other to make the Tijuacan a powerful and wealthy city. That is the main idea. If you understand the main idea of the paragraph, you will be able to answer all of these purpose questions. Because the main idea of the paragraph will always be the object. Remember I told you, right? You have to, first of all, have the right verb and then have the right object in your answer. The main idea will always be the object. And as you can see in option C, that's true, right? Because it says, illustrate how several factors influence each other to make Tijuacan a powerful and wealthy city. That is the main idea of the paragraph. Now, everything, every single thing, every single word, every single comma and period and adjective and example, every single thing that is mentioned in this paragraph will be used to support that idea, to help explain or to help prove that idea, to show evidence, you know, to basically to demonstrate that main idea. Now, what you have to do is now that you already have the object of the answer. You already know the main idea, so you have one part of your answer. You need to make sure that you have the right verb. So we know that it's trying to support this main idea, but how? Is this an example? Is this a fact? Is this, I don't know, like maybe sometimes you have contrasts in maybe they are gonna compare it with another city, right? So is this like a contrast that is made? That's what you need to be able to identify. And in this case, it's pretty clear because you have the words, for example, right? And it says, the picture of Teotihuacan is a classic picture of positive feedback among different factors. The thriving obsidian operation, for example, so we know already that this thriving obsidian operation is an example of the main idea, right? It's an example of the fact that all of the factors had positive feedback among each other. So that's it. When you have a word, for example, it means that it's to give an example. So the correct verb would be to give an example or to illustrate, which is basically the same, right? Illustrate or give an example is the same. So it could be B or it could be C, but the only one that has the two parts correct, which is the verb and the object will be C, right? It's an example of the main idea. So it's trying to illustrate this, the main idea, right? Option B has something else. The other ones don't have the correct verbs because this isn't explaining why. If it was explaining why, then you would have words like, this was because the thriving obsidian operation, blah, 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 right? That is explaining why, when you say because, since. Explaining how is another thing. When you explain how, you would say, this was done by, using the thriving obsidian operation and so on. So you need to have those two things, the correct verb, which in this case would be either to give an example or to illustrate, and the correct idea, which is gonna be always the main idea of the text, which in this case is how all of the factors that were mentioned before uh, influenced each other positively, right? Is that okay? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. 
Do you get the idea? Okay, we have, yes, okay. So yes, that's really important, you know, identifying main ideas of each paragraph is gonna be a big help for every single question, not only this one. And for your writing too, because in your writing, you're gonna have to do something like this. You're gonna propose a main idea and then use evidence to support it, right? And there are many ways in which you can do that. One of them, the most common one is giving examples. Like in this case, right? The thriving oxygen operation is only an example of the main idea, but the main idea is something else. So is it okay? Is it clear? Do you guys have any questions at all about what we've done so far? By the way, I'm gonna send you this presentation. Okay, guys. And tomorrow we'll continue practicing. We're just missing a few. We're just missing, um, let's take a look at our chart. Right now, hang on. Okay, here we go. We just we did detail. We did accept. We did inference. We did function. Right. Um. So that means we're missing vocabulary, paraphrase, reference, insert text, and summary or category. So we did maybe like half of of the of the ten. I think we can finish tomorrow, and if not, we have Friday as well. Any questions then before we go? Nice. Then please don't forget to fill out today's surveys. Today we have to complete two, please. So I'm sending the first, the usual one. And when you guys are done, I'll send the other one out. Okay, guys, thank you very much. I'll send the other one now. Okay. Good night, have a good night, guys. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, teacher. Bye, thank Bye. you. Bye, thank you. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Thank you.